Praise God. Hallelujah. Our friends, today we come to the conclusion of our stewardship week of prayer. And uh, the minister who has ministered to us the word of God throughout this week has been the servant of the Lord, Dr. Cleve Mobisha Ratemo. Dr. Cleve Mobisa Ratemo is a graduate of the University of Africa, the University of uh, Adventist University of Africa, where he graduated with a doctoral degree in ministry. We are indeed very grateful that we had this servant of the Lord ministering to us, and he's going to minister to us right away and right now. Uh, Pastor Cleve is a friend of mine for many years. We met in the year 2001 when I had just finished my bachelor's degree. I was doing a, a youth week of prayer in South Church. and that time, he was a member of that church, a young man in that church. And since that time, we have been good friends. He was in Baraton that time, and we are grateful that the Lord has seen him uh, go through educational line and even finish his doctoral degree. He is married to Sister Fosse Kerubo, and the two of them are blessed with the four children, Immaculate, Nema, Emanuela, and uh, Delbert. Uh, Sister Fosse, we are grateful that you released to us your husband to minister to us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, children, we are grateful for allowing your daddy to come and be a blessing to us. May the Lord bless you also. Pastor, we are grateful for accepting our invitation. The Lord has blessed us through your ministry. May he bless you as you minister to us today. We will hear the word of the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And as I was coming in this house this morning, I could feel the presence of the Lord in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. Praise the name of the Lord, the living church of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May I see by the wave of the hand that you are indeed happy to be in the presence of the Lord. I want to thank you, New Life, SDA Church, 5th Ngong Avenue for having this structure here in the middle of the city of Nairobi, the city in the sun. You have put the glory of God in the middle of this place. And I want to thank God that you are not satisfied. Your pastor was telling me, even with this wonderful structure, that you have here, you was telling me that you are really ambitious. And very soon, we are going to have one of the best cathedrals in Africa, I believe. Hallelujah. Like the one I see sometimes when I watch some of the renowned preachers, Robert Shuler's Cathedral in the United States of America. I have always seen... A very wonderful crystal palace. I, I am imagining that the Lord will give me more years to live to be able to see that cathedral here. I want to believe that our sister who came all the way from Japan, having done molecular virology. <laughs> Did you hear that? Will also give us some partners. From the other side of Japan, I'm sure you met friends, I'm sure. Are they Adventists there? Wow. <laughs> With all the friends who have, who have come here today, I have been uh, blessed to see uh, my brother and friend in the ministry, uh, Pastor Abunda. Pastor Abunda, 
uh, as you heard pastor say very rightly he is a professor is a lecturer at the university of eastern africa baraton but we have a story with him we have some history with this man so one of these days when i write my story i think pastor bunda may be one of those people that will appear in that book because you remember sir when i was just a young preacher having been sent to one of my first districts my first places of assignment i invited pastor abunda to come and do a spiritual campaign for two weeks and i can tell you and i don't want to tell you where we were sleeping uh, because you may want to compare where you guys from new life made me sleep because there is a big contrast there <laughs> but pastor bunda was able to live and and stay in that place because of the name of the lord hallelujah Amen. oh yes because of the name of the lord i'm so excited in fact if i start talking about the great friends i have in this congregation some of the people in this congregation i want to you i want you to know my brothers and sisters are really deep friends of mine some of whom we went with it, with them to school some of them i can assure i can tell you some of them some of them young people did you see you are that choir called his own his own is made of many youths they have graced this week of spiritual emphasis in a big way hallelujah can you lift your hand for the his own choir they have been here with us giving us the warmth But I want you to know young people that some of the people in this church I wrote them a letter and they turned it down. Girlfriend those days <laughs> I wrote a letter. Have you ever written a letter and it is you 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 receive a rejection? There are some people here seated in this congregation. I won't mention their names. <laughs> I am so humbled also to have my leader in the in this church our executive secretary in the union pastor Akali you're lucky to for us to be graced with the Dr Marundu with his beloved wife I'm sure is it no she's not the one she's not the one who's that <laughs> oh yeah 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 god bless you god bless you um uh, Uh, Dr. Marundu thank you. I know you have been busy throughout this week, but it's good you made time to come and be part of this fellowship. Thank you every one of you. Professor Wangai, I know you and I was a young man coming to New Life those days. I used to really admire your you preaching. You used to preach a lot. Those days I don't know if you still keep on preaching. We used to think you are a preacher and many times you'll preach with the, uh, Dr. Misiani. Those days half sermons yeah dr wangai preaches uh, some sermon halfway and then dr misiani finishes yeah thank you very much uh, i can keep on talking and i forget the sermon that i am supposed to preach to you today let us pray heavenly father i want to thank you for this opportunity you have given me as your servant i realize that i am feeble and i am trembling heavenly father i am praying that you will calm my nerves and that you will make me only as a nail upon a wall whereby the picture of our lord and savior jesus christ will be hanging So that Lord when I come to the end of my discourse Heavenly Father I pray that these your people some of whom have walked upon this city of Nairobi looking for an employment have not found it but they came to your church to rest a while as they wait upon you some of them heavenly father have walked upon the face of this country they have looked for medication looking for a doctor who will touch them and be able to give them the right medicine so that they can get well heavenly father 
I pray that you may stretch your healing hand upon that brother, upon that mama, upon that patient whose relative is in this congregation praying for that young man in the ICU. Oh God, I pray that your healing masses which are there in abundance will flow down to this church even as we expose ourselves to your word. Heavenly Father, I am praying that you will give a breakthrough to somebody who came in this congregation heartbroken. Oh God, because of their financial situations. And Heavenly Father, by your grace and power and your manifold blessings, Lord, you say a thousand cattle upon a thousand hills are yours. How I pray that you will open doors of blessing that you are my brother, my sister may receive her financial breakthrough. Oh God, I pray that even for the young man that is looking for a spouse, oh, may they find them even in this church. Thank you, Lord, because you will only use me as a nail upon a wall, even as you speak by the power of your Holy Spirit to your people. You have spoken to us, Lord, through your word in the book of Acts chapter number one, verse number eight. And you have said, you shall receive power after which you have received the Holy Spirit. And you shall go into the world, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world, and preach my message of salvation. Heavenly Father, I am praying for the man and woman that are watching us yonder in the United States of America, in Jamaica, in Canada, and all over the world, wherever they are watching us, Heavenly Father. May you touch them even as they expose themselves to the spoken word this morning. Thank you, Lord. Because you love your church. Thank you Lord because you will move your church to the next level. Even as we wait patiently for your second coming. I pray in Jesus name. Let the congregation of God again say amen. amen. You know in this church. Uh, this week we have been uh, talking about uh, the things that God has done for us. We have been saying God first. Hallelujah. We have been talking about the good shepherd and how he has led us. And when we started on the day of Sunday, I want you to know for those of you who probably did not have a chance to come presently, physically, and those of you who, who did not have a chance to watch us online, we were saying from the book of Romans chapter number 8 and verses number 15. The Bible says that we have not been given a spirit of fear. But the Lord has given us a spirit of adoption as the sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you received a spirit of adoption as the sons of God. That it helps you to call on the name of God as daddy. Hallelujah. That you can call your God and my God Abba. The meaning of Abba is simply daddy that we can approach the throne of grace because God has spoken to us and has loved us with a great love. The Bible says that God has so loved us. I like the way the elder, the president of our division puts it when he came to the University of Eastern Africa to preach about the love of God, Dr. Ruguri told us that the love of God does not, that starts with the word so. It is so different, different from any other love. 
It is a so loved the world. And when we read about it in the book of First John chapter number three, chapter one, First John three verse one, the Bible says, "Behold, what manner of love the Father has lavished on us." That we might be called the sons of God. That's what the young people sang here before. Behold what manner of love the Father has lavished on us. It's an extravagant kind of love that God has so loved us with. That now you and me can be called by the name of Christ. Christ has adopted us. We were once far away, but because of Jesus, we have been brought near to God, and we are today going by the name of God. We are now brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody. Doesn't it excite you to be called a brother of Jesus, to be called a sister of Jesus Christ? Doesn't it make you look good? Doesn't it give you some confidence? Doesn't it make you think of yourself as important? Oh yes, it ought to make you look good. It ought to make you think of yourself differently from what other people are thinking about you because you are a brother and a sister of Jesus Christ. And now Jesus Christ has become our elder brother. And therefore, if somebody's going to joke with you, oh, young people, when you go back to school in Form 1 and they try to bully you, you can tell them you don't joke with me because I am a child of the King. Hallelujah. You can tell them that I belong to the Heavenly Father and therefore you don't joke with me. We have been made the children of God. You know, when we were standing over here, we came to discover that some people who have experienced the love of God in their lives they behave in a different way. They do things extraordinarily. A woman by the name of Mary of Magdala, the Bible says, one time she found Jesus at the home of a man by the name of Simon. You can read that story in the book of Luke 7, you, all the way from 36, all the way to 42. The Bible says that woman met Jesus over there and she decided that she is coming to do something special for this Savior, for this Lord. Bible says that she moved closer to where Jesus was seated. She was not afraid about the eyes that were looking at her and some of the eyes were from the religious people who were in this, that house you know, according to the laws of the Jews, during that time, it was an abomination for a woman to come near a man and do the thing that she was trying to do. And she poured an alabaster oil of ointment upon the feet of Jesus. A one-year-old wage. One year, one year wage, worth of wage. That's how expensive that perfume was. That's how expensive it was. She poured all of it at the feet of Jesus. And the religious leaders were looking with meanness and wondering what the hell is this woman doing? And what about this man calling himself the son of God? People thinking that he is a prophet. What manner of prophet is he that he will allow a woman of such a stature to touch him for she is a sinner 
And you know some of us are like that. We are so holy that sometimes there are some people we don't want them to approach even this pulpit. We we see them coming to the pulpit we feel like oh 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 and what is she going to do up there? Hallelujah. But that woman had remembered that Jesus had done something great for her because one time she had been brought by these very people before the Lord and they were holding their stones ready to stone her because the law of Moses required that a woman who is caught in sin sinning a woman caught or any, any person caught sinning. And this woman was caught in the very act of what? Adultery. A sin which, which was punishable by what? By death. And the death was supposed to be death by stoning. Bible says that as everybody carried a stone to throw to that woman and hit her just waiting for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to give them the permission to do it. She waited in vain. Nobody was worthy. No one was any righteous to be able to stone that woman. And we, in this congregation, those who came, those who watched us online, we said that there are some people who, if the law gave them the permission to kill, they will kill. I don't know if they're in this congregation here today. The commandment says, if a person is caught stealing, you kill. There are people even if the government of Kenya allowed, it doesn't allow though. But there are days, I remember, if you were caught stealing in broad daylight, pickpockets. There are days in this country, and I thank God that I was born earlier enough to witness. When a man or woman was caught stealing, people will call for the tire. Let a tile. And a person will be hung that tile on his head. And the person will be lynched to death. People are watching and are clapping. Not too long ago, near my home, not too very far away, but near my home. Forgive me those of you who come from where I come from. Give me time to tell it because the Lord tells me to say it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Dr. Wangai. They decided that there are some women are the ones who are killing our children who will go to university and, be, and they get, uh, and get big jobs. Therefore, they are the ones who bewitch. They are the ones who bewitch our sons and daughters who have, who have done so well and have gone to good schools. So if a person dies near our village who has gone to school, who has a good job, who had great prospects in this life, those people feel that somebody has bewitched them. And therefore, young men and women will rise up because they seem to know, I don't know, they have some instrument to show who did it, who, who played some magic for our brother to die. And they have come to a conclusion that if you are old enough and you are walking like this, God has given you many years, and you think that now God has been gracious to you. Those young people will jump upon you. And they will lynch you. Because they suspect or somebody told them that the person who is a witch in our village is that one and that one and that one. And they feel justified, I tell you. They feel justified to kill an old woman. A grandmother who has born children. And has grandchildren. And I saw one of the young men crying. Saying my grandmother. Me, I have never thought. That my grandmother is a witch. I don't know. Why you could do this to, him, to her. My grandmother. When did she ever kill anyone? 
Me, I've never seen, I've never, I've never even seen any magic works in the house. But those young people just came and killed her. One of the churches I pastor right now. I tell you in our church, five people were lynched, killed. And sometimes it becomes difficult to preach in that church. To, to preach about love. Because some of the congregants in that, my congregation, I tell you my brothers and sisters, some of my congregants participated in lynching and killing people. Five of them. And some of them were our church members. Justified. Because those people are sinners. But this woman stood before Jesus and when Jesus Jesus' turn came to condemn her, Pastor Bunda, Jesus told her, woman, has nobody condemned you? I neither condemn you. Hallelujah. Go and sin no more. That is good news for me. I don't know about you. I don't know about yourself. I don't know how far you have wandered from the Lord and you think God doesn't love you. I hear those words. I do not condemn you. That woman expressed her love for Jesus because he saved her life from death. Literally, she saw how Jesus saved her from death. Some of you have been saved from near death, but you forget what God did for you. Some of you, remember that road accident. Road accident. You almost died. You almost died. <laughs> and, you, and you can't give a portion of your, your offering to the Lord. You can't give 10%. 10%. You can't give. When somebody gives a year's wage, one year's wage, pop, one year's wage. And you almost died in that accident. Almost death. In fact, you were the only one who was saved and a few others. The others died in the accident. Others died. You, you haven't been in an accident? I have been myself. I've been there. I remember one time I was driving my very old car from my place to go and minister to a school by the name of Nyak. Nya. I've forgotten the name again. So I was driving up the mountain. As I'm driving, you know, ah, my friend was enjoying the, the, the ride. And you know, we were new drivers. New, we just known how to drive, you know. We just got some few monies from our circle. And you know, we don't get a lot of money because you people don't want us pastors to get a lot of money. I don't know who told you that pastors should not drive a V8. We should just drive ox, what all the things. You know, if you were giving your thoughts 100% to you, people of new life, 100% tight. I'm not even going to this uh, offering. That's another time. If you were giving 100%, do you know that I would have packed my V8 there? You know, you can't believe that. But now you, it's only 20% it's only of you. Huh? In the afternoon, you, you come, Dr. Wangai, we shall be with you. Uh, talking about those things. We, we will know where you take your money. We shall know in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Marundu will uh, probably confirm this. He would, he would recommend that we get as much. But only just a handful of you are serious about Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, look here. As I was driving up there, my old car, so that I know you were asking, Pastor, don't forget that story. Tell us how it ended. <laughs> so my friend told me, man, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, even me, let me drive. Oh, Pastor Lucas, you remember? Pastor you know. Lucas says, hey, let me also do what? Let me also drive and feel the goodness of driving a car. Therefore, I gave him, ah, you know, I'm very generous. For those of you who have met me, I'm a very generous guy. I said, oh, okay, take the, take the wheel. Me, I, I came from the driver's seat. I came and uh, went to the uh, co-driver's seat. The, German, the gentleman entered there. Hey, hey, hey. And then as he was driving up the hill, there is a, a place where, uh, from the school, the name is Nyaikuro. So the people shortcut to come there. So 
A teacher was coming from there. And you know, my friend was so excited. He wanted to make sure that the teacher sees him driving. So he said, Mwalimu, Mwalimu. As he was saying, Mwalimu, and you know, the car is going. And then, you know, we were supposed to turn just like uh, 20 meters ahead. So the brother then again, on gear three. Those of you who drive cars. On gear three, the gentleman decides to cut, to, to turn on a sharp corner. The rest is, the, is a story I am telling you here. I had myself on the air with the vehicle. We came down, pop! Again, pop! I don't remember the, rest, the other things that happened. But the next time I remembered, I saw a host of people, a crowd of people surrounding us. Because our car was caught between a stump that had been left within uh, somewhere along the road. Some of these things, God leaves them there for a purpose. Hallelujah. And the, the window of, of, of the back seat, the rear seat was open. So the, the stump held the car down there. And you know what? We came out of the vehicle and skated. Eh? Elder Steve. Eh, and skated. And then you know people were saying, ah, Munto ah, Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey. And then we are also outside there, you know, we have already come out and say, hey, even as we are saying, hey, did somebody come out alive out of this place? Then I said, can we just turn the vehicle? So we turned the vehicle around. And then people were looking. Now, where are the owners? Where are these, the owners of this vehicle? Then I said, can, can I try and see if it starts? So I, I, I opened the door, and then the key was there. I started, and then it, the engine went on. I said, wow, wow. And you know, we were almost, we were supposed to preach at around 8 in the night. So, the, the car's engine is on. And the people, my friend told, Pastor, Pastor, please enter the other side. Pastor entered. You know, they, they don't know what's happening. And then, straight to the school. We parked that car and as if nothing has happened, we ran to the pulpit to preach the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of the things God has done for us, I wonder how we are unable to respond in kind. I wonder how we are unable to respond in kind. Look at that. Look at how that woman responds. Look at how Abraham responds to God's love. When God tells him, give me that one son. The only son. Give him up. Give him up. And Abraham comes with no questions. Trustingly and obediently, he brings up his son. I was telling the son of my brother, Pastor Jacob Akali, by the way, New Life Church, you should forgive him. He stole me and took me to his house. And while I was there, I had to talk to the young man Gideon about the story of Isaac. And I even said it, that I have never had the children teachers teach their children about obedience like Isaac. How can Isaac this accept to bring his hands to be the sacrifice. How many teenagers here are willing to obey their parents? Let me see their hands. Even when the parent is saying now, it is time for sacrifice, and you are the sacrifice. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> it is now time for sacrifice, my son, and now you are the sacrifice. How many will bring their hands you know, I'm telling you shortly my story. I will tell you, my time is not so much far spent. But let me tell you, my, my father was trying to catch up with me because I was a disobedient boy. I grew up in a very disobedient young man to parents. Uh, drinking alcohol, drinking, uh, smoking marijuana. That was something that I learned in school when I was in Form 2 in Cardinal Otunga High School, 
That school then was the epitome. I, I have some friends here, by the way, they told me, but Pastor, we saw you on, uh, online and we, we you, Pastor, you didn't introduce them. Cardinal Rotunga, boys, they knew my story. I was dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> in drinking alcohol and in, uh, in, in smoking bangi. And you know when you smoke bangi and when you when you drink alcohol you have to be also a thief. You, you, you have to be a thief. You, you must steal because as a young man where do you get the money? Where do you get the money, Professor Maranga? Where, where do you get the money? And you are <laughs> and you and the parents give also give a 200 for pocket money. Pa parents, how much pocket money do you give your children? Did you give the form ones? How much? 1,000 only <laughs> pocket money. How can pocket money of 1,000 buy you loaf, quarter loaf, or a half loaf in the morning, in the evening, for the rest of the term, and afford to? Buy some packet of cigarettes. Well, is it enough? You, you must be a stealer. You must be a thief. <laughs> so, even though you were not born from a house of stealers or of thieves, you will steal. I'm telling you, young man, you will become a thief even though your father and mother are not thieves. You will start stealing because you must take care of your habit. Your desire is controlling you. You want to feel good, you know, when you smoke bangi, sometimes you feel like you're flying high when everybody else is just walking down there. <laughs> you know what they did to me? They really, these people really messed my life. These people who taught me this trade of smoking bangi. They really lied to me. They told me that when you smoke a lot of bangi, you, you can become a genius. And in mathematics, you can get everything. I don't know. I don't know how, how it is possible. I don't know if my sister from Japan, you need that to, <laughs> to do molecular virology. I don't know if Dr. Wanga did those. I don't know. So the day I smoked a lot of bangi and came to do a mathematical exam, I cannot tell you the truth, and God is my witness, that for the first time, mercy, I got zero, zero. <laughs> and I had done a lot of it. I had done a lot of it. No bangi. Uh, and when I was coming to school, you know, I'm feeling like, you know, I own the world, you know. I'm, going, <laughs> I'm moving like this. I, 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 I'm telling you. Uh, my limb sees me and he slaps me. He says, young man, you are just strolling to class when the, other, the rest of the people are where? In class. You can't be serious. Ah. Uh. And you know when he slaps me, I look the other side. Lo and behold, who do I see? In a mixed school. I'm talking of a mixed school. Those of you who have been in a mixed school. Who do I see? My girlfriend. And, and my girlfriend. My, girl, my girlfriend becomes very, very discouraged, very dismayed. And I see her really hurt. Oh, oh my, 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 my king. My king has been, <laughs> has been brought down by a slap. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then I say, oh. oh no, no, no. I cannot, I cannot be beaten like that, you see. I, I come from down there and I held the deputy principal by the shirt and I give him one down. And the students come running, you know. They, they, they are not helping the teacher from me. But they are enjoying the experience. <laughs> because the deputy principals are usually the people who take actions. You know, they are the most, they are the disciplinarians of the school. And nobody likes them. If you are a deputy principal, you forgive me, please. <laughs> but that's the truth, you know, I'm talking about. I also did it, the same thing to my, my father. My father. He's holding me. I've stolen his camera. Because now I've become a thief. And now... I have sold it with some money and now I have drunk alcohol with the whole of it. I have no money with me. A camera costing 3,000 plus. I, am, I have sold it with 300 shillings. 
And now my father gets to know about it and he holds me and he wants to discipline me. And I can't, I can't accept it. But Isaac, Isaac just uh, took his, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's confound, it's profound. You saw that young man of uh, one of our MPs in this country. It's a very sad story. I'm sure those of you who read news and watch news, KTN and also Citizen and also those of you who are very good at social media, you must have seen that story. There are many other stories which are being written over there. Uh, I may not know the right one, but you know the story is like, ah, uh, the young man is resisting discipline. He's resisting the counsel of the parents. He's saying, no, daddy, you want to take me to that school? I don't want to go to that school. Probably it's a public school and you as a minister, you should have probably thought of taking me to an international school. Huh? Brookside. Is it Brookside or Brookhouse? <laughs> you forgive me, you people of Nairobi, you can forgive me because Professor Maranga knows that I live in a village and he has been there. We were with him on Friday before, before I came here. He knows my story, Professor Maranga. So, Brookhouse and there, which other one? Some of you are in those schools. Huh? Huh? You don't say those names. <laughs> I don't know if that's the reason, but Isaac, we should remove our hearts for Isaac, hallelujah, for accepting to get into that altar. And I can tell you, God did not let him go through the knife of his own father. God worked up a miracle and Isaac was able to be free. God offered a lamb for the sacrifice, which was signifying the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the lamb of God, which was slain before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Abraham was trying to be like God. That woman, Mary Magdalena, was trying to be like God. <laughs> Even, even, I, even Zacchaeus, by the way, was trying to be like God when Jesus met him. You know, Jesus can stop for you. Listen to me. Jesus will stop for you. He was trying to see Jesus. He, pan, he, he, he climbed on a sycamore tree wanting to see Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus did what? He stopped. Do you know, Dr. Wangai, that uh, probably this week of spiritual emphasis was not meant for you? Or maybe it was for you. <laughs> or somebody else here. S -s -s you. Do you know that God can spend a million shillings just to save one soul? Did you know that? Do you know that God will stop for you, just you? And if you start coming in front here even now, I will stop my sermon. Because why should I preach so long when you have already accepted Christ as your personal savior? My work here is to convince you in fact, if I knew you had the story which was given by the, the children's story about stewardship, if, if, you, if, you, if, if God will reveal to me that you understood and you are wing, going to implement that in your life, by the way, I wouldn't be here this long. But I must fulfill all righteousness. Hallelujah. Lest the pastor Kali will tell me, Pastor, you know you should have finished your sermon. Let me finish my sermon. My sermon basically is this. That God will restore you back to your former place. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you have been. In the book of Joel, chapter number 2, verses number 25 and 27. I am hoping that I will be through from this place. In the next few minutes, Joel chapter 2, verse 25 and 26, the Bible says, I will repay for the years that the swarming locust ate, the young locust, the destroying locust, and the devouring locust, my great army that I sent against you. My brothers and sisters, God is serious about bringing about a restoration. When Elijah, the servant of God, 
in 1 Kings 17, verse 7 to 16, when he met that widow of Zarephath, the Bible says that he promised her, he told that woman, your oil, your flour will not come to an end until the season of what? Until the season of rain, of dryness is over. He promised her. She had a last meal, a last meal to eat herself and her child before they die. Last meal. But the servant of God assured her, if you give me first, hallelujah, Adventist stewardship, stewardship department, you have a wonderful slogan, God first. God, the servant of God, told that woman, give me the morsel of bread first, after which you may eat you and your what? And your children. And your son. She believed the servant of God. Those of us that are living in the last days of closing the history of this world are finding the word of God difficult to believe. When he says in Malak 3, chapter number 10 to 11, Bring ye all the tithes and offerings into the storehouse of the Lord and test me in this and see if I will not do what? If I will not open the floodgates of heaven and give you, pour out a blessing that you will not have enough to put in. Bible says, I will rebuke the devourer for you. Somebody listening to me? So that it will not ruin the produce of your ground. And your wine and your vine in your field will not be barren. Hallelujah. God is giving a promise to some parent in this congregation. Telling you parents you have cried too much. Telling you parents that your life is worthy living because Christ died for you. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God is in the business of restoring somebody here. God wants to restore us to our former state. The work of redemption is basically the work of restoration. Hallelujah. God wants to restore us. If we call on the name of the Lord, God is going to hear us from heaven. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters in New Life SDA Church, that as I stand for you before you today, I am a work of restoration. Hallelujah. I am a work of the redemption of the Lord. I want you to know that when I had come to the end of my life, my mama trusted God for my life. I want you to know that I did not know about anything that, that I all care about God, but somebody cared about you. My mama called on the name of the Lord, and I remember when I was in a far away country, I did not know about me. I did not care about my life. I had spent my life drinking alcohol. I had spent my life taking drugs. I want you to know that I completed all my money. All my money. My sister Mercy will tell you. I spent all my money. Mercy, you know that story. You were there. You saw me desperate, moving up and down in Spice Memorial College without hope. You people had to decide to put money together with, 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 uh, with, uh, with, our, with our brother uh, Ndege, or Walker, with Mobisa, 
and the rest of the African students in India. You guys decided to put money together and you put me in a plane and they put me in a plane from Bombay like cargo without value. Hold on choir, you're going to sing. Don't worry, don't, don't go sit. Do not go sit, just stand there. I will be done in a few moments. You know, when a person dies in a foreign land, they put him in a coffin. And in that coffin, they write outside, cargo without value. And they put it in, a, in, a, in, a, in an airplane. Meaning that no tax. When I came from that far away country, where my friends and the children of God put me in that plane, I was like cargo without value. I had lost meaning in life. I had lost value in life. I alighted at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport without knowing where I was going. Neither did I know where I was coming from. But just the other day, when I got an invitation from New Life SDA Church, it happened that I was in Mombasa. Now I want you to see the difference before we let the choir sing. I arrived from Bombay, like cargo without value. When I arrived at JKIA, I was hopeless. I did not have any hope. I was taken to Chiromo Lane Medical Center. I was taken to Madari. You name those rehabilitation centers. But one day the Lord visited me in his graciousness. I was seated in Nairobi South Church. And I remember Dr. Chanda was preaching. He was talking about the grace of God. The amazing grace of God. And I remember that time I was sitting in the congregation. And he, as he was coming to the end of his discourse, he said, I have been a doctor and I have treated many people through various diseases. And some of them have gotten well. But others have died. There are certain diseases which are terminal. They really don't have medicine. They don't have a cure. And one of them is cancer, diabetes, and others. You can live through life by management. The other disease, he said, was alcoholism and drug addiction. They said these two don't have a medicine. They don't have medicine. If there is a medicine, I remember as he was concluding that story, that medicine is Jesus Christ. It is only Jesus Christ who can help such kind of people. It is today, 20 years down the road. And I was coming, as I was coming from Mombasa, because I stood up and gave my life to Jesus. But I was, as I was coming from Mombasa, and I, as I took the plane, from Mo International Airport to JKIA, I had a contrast of the time when I came from a faraway country as cargo without value. And now, when I had been given an opportunity to sit and talk with the who is who in this country and in this world, I had just been sitting together with a friend by the name of His Excellency, Erastas Mwencha, former AAU Secretary General. I had just been in the same plane with the Honorable Member of Parliament by the name of Shadrach Mose, just chatting about life and about how God can do great things. What a contrast. How that God can save. How much that God can save. In fact, Dr. Marundu, if there is somebody in the whole of our union 
who should be given the the who should be given the mandate to be called doctor alone to use the name doctor when we are preaching i think it should be me <laughs> not because it is a great achievement per se but just to show how much god can save a sinner just that not not, not for any reason because we have like in new life very very educated people a mere doctorate in ministry may not be anything but just to help a young man to help some parent here who is despairing and thinking it can't happen that god can't restore as the choir is coming in front here i want you to think about your life i want you to think about it what is it that god cannot do for you if you surrender your life to him mary magdalene was totally transformed by jesus and there is nothing she could hold back i don't know what you would hold back from jesus zacchaeus was totally transformed and he surrendered everything to jesus that very hour somebody giving half of his property to the poor and four times whoever he has stolen from he almost he, it's like he, he gave everything away when we look at jesus the things of this life which we value so much we lose their value hallelujah they will glow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace Oh, 
specific call here, a very serious call, probably one of the calls that uh, you are not used to hearing, but the Spirit of the Lord is saying that during this week of stewardship, I must be able to make this call. It's a serious call. All the examples of people whom we have been able to talk about all this week, I can tell you gave 100%. 100%. You, you, you do your calculation and see how much Zacchaeus gave. After giving half to the poor, the other half. Three, four times, isn't it? Four? Four times to the people he had stolen money from. 
And I can imagine if he ended up also bringing the tithe and offering, what else he remained with, I don't know. If you talk about the story of Mary Magdalene, she also gave 100%. One year's wage, that was more than 100% of a monthly income. I have tried, by the way. You know, these things, Dr. Marundu, I don't think we should tell people things that we don't do. <laughs> you know, asking people to do what? To give when we don't do what? I have tried. I don't have a lot of money myself. And as I told you here earlier that we pastors don't uh, get to earn a lot of money because, of course, you know you don't give. We only have <laughs> a few of you giving. But I want to be sure, I don't want to make assumptions here. If you know for sure God has helped you on a regular basis, you make or you return 10% to the house of the Lord. If, you, if you, you, you try, I'm not saying that you have been perfect, but you try at least to return 10%. I want you to, to stand up wherever you are. Just be sincere to God. We are not trying to expose anyone here. We are not trying. For me, when I was called and I was a sinner, I came, I came. I was the only person who gave my life to Jesus that day. And, 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 and uh, uh, wonderful, thank you, my sister. If you know you try at least to give 10%, stand up. If you try, if you try, you try, you try. Ningumu, sometimes probably you forget, but you try. Thank you very much for being sincere. Now, thank you very much. Don't feel bad if you're not standing. It's okay. You're just being honest to God, isn't it? You're being honest to God. Now, if you think, you know, the 10% church, this money is the one which uh, makes your pastor have a place to stay and also be able to take his children to school. But I want you also to be bold enough. If you think you manage also to give an offering or uh, up and above what you get as 10%. If you think you manage to give that. I want you to come in front here because I am also one of those people who try to give a second tithe. I want you to come. I try a lot. You come. You, you, the others, you remain standing. If you try and give a 10%, very good. God bless you. But if you try and give a second tithe and you make it 20%, please come here where I am. Because I also try. I also try. I can show you if you want evidence. You know, these days, our union gave us a very wonderful system. I can show you all my receipts here. They are here. They are here. SDA. We have what, something we call CFMS, a very wonderful system here. For me, hey, from that day, you give me 1,000? For me, 200 already has gone to, to, do, to the Lord. I try. But you know people, there are people who give 30, 40%, 50%, half. Thank you. Thank you those who try. Now, these are the people who try. And I'm also here, by the way. I try. Let me tell you what our offering, our system does. Our CFMS system in South Kenya Conference. Let me just take one receipt. One time, the Lord blessed me with, I see here, how much money? I was blessed with around um, 1,500. No, no. 1,500. That's 15,000. Isn't it? When you give tithe of 1,500 is how much? That's how much you were blessed with? Somebody gave me 15,000, and by the way, uh, somebody just, that's an extra income, not, not from my salary, 15,000, then I gave here 1,500, local church funds, combined offering, 650, went to the church, local church, 650, and, and 750, and another 750 went to, went to, the higher organization. So, I gave 3,000. My receipt reads how much? Out of 15,000, my receipt reads how much? 3,000. So, that's just one receipt I picked. That one, that's one receipt. 
I don't think I have lacked since, since I tried to do this. In fact, when I was not giving this, I didn't have surplus. But when I started giving this, I have seen God just, money comes from left, right, and center. Those who are going out are saying that they don't want to be blessed. Okay. Now, I want to pray for these people if you allow me to. But I also want to pray for other people after this. Heavenly Father, they have tried. They have understood that your work must go on. They have understood how much love you showed them on the cross of Calvary. So much that there is nothing they can keep to themselves. And they discover that the money they have is not theirs after all. It belongs to the Lord. In fact, 100% belongs to God. I don't know if there is any among these people who can give a testimony that they have lacked financially because they have been so faithful. Oh yes, they may have challenges, other challenges of life, but I want to believe that you will not allow them to suffer lack. You will bless them because you have said you will bless those who are faithful to you. I know they have given probably up to 20%, but of course they give more. There is also another percentage for building. There's another percentage of helping many departments of the church. God bless them because they try to support your work. As they go to sit right now, Heavenly Father, I am also praying that you will touch the other special group. Heavenly Father, which is seated down, not that they are the great sinners, but Father God, before you, you have accomplished our salvation for us. Your salvation is perfect. We have no part to play in it. You have already saved us on the cross of Calvary. Christ has already become our big brother. The only thing remaining is for us to love you back. Dear Lord, they also want to love you back. And somehow, they have not been doing it. Heavenly Father, as I call them to come in front, to stand up, may you give them the grace to make that step. If indeed, if indeed, they also want to try to return to you at least 10%, at least 20%. Because when they give only 10%, Heavenly Father, they leave the church to lack. They leave their local church to struggle with funds. But if they can afford to give another 10%, this church will be able to do many programs without problems. The gospel of Christ can go to the uttermost parts of the world. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Now, I pray that you may bless us to this end as the others are coming and I'm going to make a special prayer for them. May you bless these ones never to lack for I pray in Jesus' name. As you go to sit, my friends, I'm asking you, redemption singers, to be coming. We want to sing along with the people who are saying that we will come and do it also. Why will we not also do like others? If you want to do like others, can you stand up from where you are? If you just want to try and do what our brothers and sisters have done in the hand before, please stand up wherever you are. Please stand up. If you are ready, if you are willing to say, Jesus, I, I am also going to try that thing. It may be difficult. It may be tough, but I want to try. If you want to try. I'm not forcing anyone. I have never known how to force anyone. Please stand up wherever you are. Stand up. If you want to try in your life, you want to be able to give a faithful sight, you are not standing because you have never given sight. You have been giving, but sometimes you discover that you don't do it on a regular basis. Thank you for those who are standing. Thank you. As redemption singers are coming in front here, I want you also to come to just make your way up here. And I want to ask the pastors in the congregation also to come this way.
because we are going to pray. I want to ask you, Dr. Marundu, to pray a very special prayer for these wonderful men and women of God who are standing, who are saying we are also going to try. You know what? As they are coming, let me tell you something. Some of us don't give a perfect tithe because we think we have little. We think that I have so little that I, I, now I give. I already don't have. I don't even have a job. Why should I give? A friend gives you 2,000 shillings. You don't think that you can give from, a tithe from there. You see that money as money which goes direct to rent. Let, let me tell you. The woman was asked for how much? Come, come here. I want you to, people to stand here. The woman was asked how much? How much was she asked to give? Her last meal. Her last meal. So you cannot say you don't have a job. That's why you don't give. Even when I give you 100 shillings, 10 shillings belongs to who? To God. If somebody gives you 200 shillings, how much belongs to God? 20 shillings belong to God. Thank you for coming. And if you want to give an offering, I'm telling you, if you only give a faithful tithe, you make the church to suffer. Pastor Kali may not call Clifford Ratemo from all the way from South Kenya to come and preach here if you don't give the second tithe. Or if you don't give the second of I don't call it the second tithe myself. I call it an offering. It's an offering of love, Professor. Thank you for coming, my brother. Know those who are here. Those who are here. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You, if we are full here, you can even stand the way the others are standing. There's no problem. Let me tell you, the others don't give. These are the last one. Uh, Dr. Wanga, you should know about them. They don't give a, a perfect tithe. Do you know why? Because they have too much. Somebody makes a tender of 50 million. How much is he supposed to bring to the church of God? How much? The five million. Somebody sees five million. Ni bebe five million. Apeleka kanisa. Apana, apana. Some of us don't give a faithful tithe, a faithful offering, because we already earn too much. But did you know that that money can go in a moment? Did you know that that job can go in a moment? Did you know that? When coronavirus came, what happened to billionaires and millionaires? Didn't people lose as much as 100 million? Didn't people lose as much as millions of money? Yes, people lost millions of money. Look at Ukraine, the war in Ukraine, in Russia and Ukraine. People who owned fleets. There's a man called Ab Abu Movarich. What, what is his name? The owner of Chelsea. Owner of Chelsea, you know, those young men, where are you? Those who watch football, where are you? The owner of Chelsea. How much did he lose because of the war in Ukraine? Millions, billions of money. He has lost. His jets was, what, what, didn't, what done what? Was stopped from the airwaves. The, whatever he has in the sea, they were, no, they were hindered from progressing. He's, he lost millions. I'm telling you, some people don't give because they have too much. They think that if you earn 10 million, you feel like giving 1 million to the Lord becomes what? A hey, big deal. But let me tell you, you do it. There are people who have done it and they have never regretted. Money given to the Lord is never in vain. As you start that song, you know, I was, I was thinking you're starting that song. As we sing for them, these are the heroes of today. Hallelujah. And I'm asking you, if you have never been baptized or you want to go through the waters of baptism, this is the opportunity you can also come along. For you, you can come all the way here as the choir sings that beautiful song. I know we have eaten some of our time, but it is okay. Today is the Sabbath. Hallelujah. And then Dr. Marundu will pray for us as we end the song. If there is anyone who really wants to start his life with Jesus, this one more time, you want to start your life with Jesus, please, you want to be baptized like me, the way I gave myself. I came the way I was. And God has never disappointed me. Jesus, mommy, has never disappointed me. Hallelujah. Wala ubatizo njo. Njo ni kusalimia. Wata ubatizo na wasalimia. If you want to get baptized, 
kama hujabatizwa nataka nishike mkono wako mwanza maisha yako na Yesu Mtimbo hata wale walikuwa kama mimi Mmejaribu maishani bana Struggling with substance abuse Kama una mtoto ambaye struggling with substance abuse Come 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 I want to shake those hands with my pastor here my leader Come come Hallelujah Even one person in the kingdom of God is great Come come there's more time for you Jesus can wait forever for you The reason Jesus has not come is just one who we supposed to come here Come come Anyone out there? If you have a child struggling with substance abuse like I did Come. I want to shake your hand mama baba if you want to be baptized I want to shake your hand God will restore you my brothers and sisters God will restore you what the locust has eaten Whatever the devourer has eaten God will return it Look up and see Jesus Jesus is ready to stop for you It may be you That is holding this service this long it may be you don't imagine it is somebody else don't wait for tomorrow don't wait for tomorrow there is no tomorrow come now is the day the lord has made if you hear the voice of the lord had and not your heart Yesu utakaribishwa sana kwa mkozi tena utakuwa na yimbi nguni waweza kuwa kama yuleza kayo unaki usana ya kutafuta Yesu this is the opportunity this is the time kisho utakaribishwa what God has done for others he will do it for you as well God will do it for you as well do not be ashamed Jesus says that if you are ashamed of me I will also be ashamed of you before my father. Give your life. Today is the opportunity. Don't wait for another opportunity. Thank you for those who have come. God bless you. You will never regret. You will never regret. Come 
publicly. Come publicly. Don't wait to come in secret. Come publicly. I'm going to ask our leader to make a very special prayer for all these our friends who have come here. We were privileged to have Dr. Abumba Abunda, uh, Pastor Abunda with us. Pastor Abunda, I would like you to pray for those people who are going to uh, be baptized soon after this. Please, if you take this microphone of mine, uh, you will say the prayer first and then our pastor, uh, Pastor Marundu will complete, will finish. Please, you can start it up. You can start us off. Rest humble our faces and uh, bow down for our own prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we ought to thank you for this great and holy supper that you have enabled all of us to come here and hear this wonderful message from Pastor Crayford Ratemo. His testimony is real. It's an indicator of many challenges that we undergo. But God, those ones who trust you and come to you, you always transform them to be holy and to follow your holy ways as we wait for your second coming. Lord, today we have our brothers and sisters who have said truly that they have given their lives to you, that whatever they want to do, their plans and their needs and their wishes will always be through the cross where you were crucified. We are now presenting them before you in a holy way because you, we are your holy children whom you have saved through the cross. And today also they have accepted that you, Jesus, will be their personal savior in their lives. So Lord, we ask you to protect them in all ways from any harm and danger that the devil may want to put across them. Remove every obstacle, and Lord, give them your holy angels, wherever they will be, Lord, to protect them and to remind you, to remind them about what you have done to them. Give them thy Holy Spirit, always to remind them to do good things against bad things. And Lord, we know Many of them are also in this world. They are undergoing through various trainings. Lord, we ask you to give them their needs and fulfill in a way that will be full to them and to always defeat that you are their personal savior. Lord, we pray for the all of this church as we have come here and we have witnessed in one way or the other. We have also been transformed and we have to thank you also and we invite you into our souls to walk with us and to protect us from any harm and danger, and always God to show us the right way to fall, and that's through the, uh, the cross. We thank you for the hope, for the trust we have in Christ, and always Lord remember us in your kingdom, and this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Almighty Father, God in heaven, in whom we move, live, and have our being, we want to thank you for this live testimony message from your servant. You are able to save completely to all who come to you. Lord, at this time, it is you that we have wronged, not Pastor Kali, not Pastor Clifford, but we have wronged you. Our brothers and sisters who have stood and come to the altar have come to you, Lord Jesus, for wronging you. And whenever we come to you, you only forgive us and tell us to sin no more. We pray for new beginnings because it's only through the grace of God as they commit and surrender to you that, Lord, they can have that new beginning by you reminding them to be faithful to you. 
We want to thank you for the brethren who have been trying and have been faithful. But no, there is nothing that is enough. What is enough is our lives to you. And therefore we give our lives to you. Forgive us for becoming like the children who receive their chips from their mother and they could not give their mother. We have done like those children. But now when we come to you, Lord, you are able to forgive us and make a journey as you did with Zacchaeus. Lord, there are those who are going to do restitution. Lord, as you receive them, may you shower them with your blessings, not only to them individually, but with your families. We pray for others who may be seated. As they lift their hearts to you, Lord, make new beginnings with them. We pray for the clergy, we pray for the laity, we pray for all of us. Lord, that we may be faithful at this point in the world. There is enough that you are telling us during the time of the flood, people noticed the animals coming to the ark. And today you are teaching us through many things that we see. Help us to realize the times that we are in. As we make the new beginnings with you day by night, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you.